based on what he told you guys, that he's somebody that you at least have to be aware of where he is. I said to him yesterday, in your country you were only 18 when you ran your first marathon. That is so young. Why did you try that? He said, we had great 5,000-meter runners and 10,000-meter runners in our country. My coach said, be a marathoner, you'll be on the Olympics. He's now shooting for his fourth Olympics. Let's talk about Hellebuck, who's up on the lead right now. He is a guy who is trying to qualify for the Belgian Olympic team. They didn't send anybody to the Olympic Games the last time because they say they don't want somebody to be there just for the pride of being there. They want somebody who has a legitimate chance to win. He is shooting for a particular goal in terms of time on this day. That is a good point. You see Peter Fonseca with the Nike outfit, and number four is the person you're referring to, and that is Eddie Hellebuck out there. Um, and what we were talking about with Hellebuck, he may try and pull, this is number four, keep him in mind when you see him later in the show, a Paul Pilkington. He may go the whole way. He also said, if I don't think I can make the qualifying time of two hours, 10 minutes, and 45 seconds of my home country of Belgium, he said, and I'm at 18 or 20 miles, I will probably drop out and try it in Boston. Yeah, he does have that other chance. That, of course, is in April in Boston, so he feels that this is not his last chance, but he feels also that it may be his best chance just because of the conditions and because of the way the course is laid out. The Los Angeles Marathon is brought to you in part by Honda, presenting sponsor of the Los Angeles Marathon. By KFC, everybody needs a little KFC. And by Swatch, the official timekeeper of the Centennial Olympic Games. Inside every person who needs a minivan is someone who swore they'd never buy one. That is, until Odyssey, the Honda of minivans. If the baby comes... You know my pager. I got it. Mom, go. Enjoy the reunion. Oh, oh, no so baby yet. Yeah. Because you need to be reachable, AT&T's made paging messages simple and affordable. There's a new Humphreys. Ian Humphreys. Paging made simple, within your reach. That's your true choice, AT&T. When you get your prescription filled at Thrifty Drugs or Payless Drug Stores, our pharmacists not only welcome your questions, they encourage them. And they give you PharmaFacts, a helpful printout that tells you about your prescription in words that are easy to understand. Your pharmacist's phone number is always available in case you have more questions about your prescription. It's all part of the pharma system at Thrifty Drugs and Payless Drug Stores. Because we take your medicine as seriously as you do. Going bald? For two weeks only, Winston Tires is offering a cure. Four tires starting as low as $69. Sale ends March 9th. Hi there. Lunch. It's been done and done again. Even the special's not that special. Usual? A same old thing. So, head to KFC. We've put a whole new spin on lunch. Introducing Chicken Twisters. Tender chunks of KFC chicken, fresh veggies, tangy sauces, rolled and ready in a soft bread twist. Every day until 3, only at KFC. So don't just do lunch, enjoy it. And now at KFC, try any one of our new Chicken Twisters, Caesar Club, or Spicy Buffalo, just $2.49. You're watching the Los Angeles Marathon on UPN 13 Los Angeles. The Olympic Games in the city of Los Angeles, they are synonymous. 1932, the first Olympic Games here in the United States. I think, Larry, that's Babe Dickinson. Yes, you are right. What a memory. Bad. Welcome to Jeopardy. Were we there? Did we do that no, together? No, we didn't. No, we did do this one together, though. <laughs> 1984, the 23rd Olympiad. A little bit more glitzy, a little bit more glamorous, no less exciting. You and I together. First time. Michael Jordan as a young man. And, of course, Edwin Moses, who uh, one of the legends of the sport of track and field. This was 1984. This is 1996 in the 11th running of the Los Angeles Marathon. And opening ceremonies to be there in person is a lifetime experience. Yeah, it really is something special. Well, we're going to have our look at a second Olympian. You heard a little bit earlier from Kathy Johnson-Clark about what it means to be in the Olympic Games and what it does for you for the rest of your life. Let's take another look at another Olympian, a man who's been there, a man who's felt the feelings, a man who knows what it's all about. Pete Klensos, a USC graduate, pole vaulted for Greece in the 1932 Olympics. 
His fondest memories are of the camaraderie in the Olympic Village and of the marathon competition. The marathon run in 32 was so sensational. Juan Zavala's time was about 2.31, 36. And the last one was about four hours or something. One of the greatest uh, events I ever saw in my life happened to a Japanese runner who fell down. You don't re this isn't recorded. I haven't found any recording of this. But he fell down about 50 yards from the finish. And he got up and he fell down again. And some officials rushed over there and tried to help him. And the announcer said, don't touch him. If you touch him, he'll be disqualified. So they backed up. And the runner, he staggered. These other runners were coming up on him around the turn. And he inched. And everybody in the stadium was standing up, hollering and yelling in a very explosive situation. And finally, he crossed the line on his hands and knees. And the attendants grabbed him and began to resuscitate him. But to me, that was one of the most emotional things I've ever seen in my life. And as, as if I was there yesterday watching it. That's how, how great it was. Pretty sharp guy, Pete Clensos. Let's take you back out to the race course right now. We mentioned earlier we have our own official racer in this race. And he is, of course, once again, Tim McClune. And Tim, you were on tape a little bit earlier, so you didn't hear how I introduced you. But I was asking you, everybody's talking about Olympic aspirations in this race. And these are the New Jersey Olympic trials, are they not, Tim? Well, I've already made my concession speech. So I have accepted the fact I am not going to win this race today. I'm a little crushed. But I'm going to move on anyway. To tell you the truth, we're moving pretty quickly here. And I think that the humidity is going to be more of a factor than we would have guessed earlier. I'm sweating more than I ought to be, even in the lousy shape I'm in. But uh, we've got a long ways to go. I think it's a little bit warm. We've got a woman over here spraying water on everybody. But I'll be talking to a lot of people during the course of the race. And we'll see what's really going on in the real race back here. Do you really see, Tim, the weather being a factor in this race? I think so. It's, when we were on the starting line, it seemed like it was cool. But I think with the humidity we've got going here, it's going to be a little bit tougher than people expected. Tim, weather, uh, wind is no factor, correct? Not at all. No okay. wind. Except the one in my mouth, which is like that's, that. that's a big wind. That's always been a big <laughs> wind. Hey. <laughs> I love you guys. Tim McClune uh, out on a race course, and uh, we'll be checking back with him as this race goes in. And what a segue from Tim McClune to the elites. They were one and the same, not now. Lead pack is still Handbag. extremely uh, close, and you can expect that to Conga. go on for quite a while. Let's take a look right now at the leaderboard. That is brought to you by Honda, presenting sponsor of the Los Angeles Marathon. And our leaderboard, as we see it come up after four miles, Eddie Hellebuck is the leader. Salvador Parra is in second place. Danny Martinez, kind of a surprise there, although we've seen that before. Gregorio Dominguez is back in fourth place. Really, though, there's little to choose between these, and they're right. going to change a great and deal. And you get Bukhanov in fifth place and Juma hanging there. Remember, it doesn't make much difference because you have a large knot of people up there this early in the race. We're probably talking of a lead pack of, there you have it. I was going to say 20 on a guess, and that's about right. Uh, so it doesn't make any difference who's fifth. So they may not be household names exactly, but simple fact is I, I really believe we're going to have a very competitive race today, and it's a race with a cause because people are running against the clock as much as they are against one another. And that can also be said in the women's version of the race. So for the first time, let's get back to the women's pack. Catherine Switzer following the lead women. Catherine? Hey, you guys, you know, it's unbelievable. Um, somebody else who's moving very quickly out here besides Tim McLoon is Lubov Klotchko right behind me. She's actually flying in the face of conventional wisdom for somebody so experienced as Lubov. She's on a 2.23 marathon pace. Oh That's five minutes faster than her personal best of 2.28. Larry, just because you like to keep stats there, she passed two miles in 10.56 and four miles in 21.56. Probably, if you look behind her, you cannot even see the other women. But they are back there about 30 seconds behind her. They're a group of eight. They're all running together in a pack, as we predicted. And all of our favorites are back there. We drop back to take a look at them. They include Anna Rivica, Mar Mary Lou Carmen Diaz, uh, Natalia Garushka, et cetera, et cetera. And the, the pack that's back there, are they all together? Yes, they are, Larry. Um, uh, there are about eight of them. There are some favorites who are still behind them, letting them take the heat. But there are eight of them that are about 60 seconds behind her, 30 seconds behind her. Not an unusual tactic, of course. Joan Benoit won the Olympic Games here in 1984 with a very similar tactic. She's not ready to run 223. And if you want to stay tuned and watch the drama unfold, let's see if she starts to die. It won't be early in the race. And she's very fit, but not to run 223. I do remember, though, the last time she ran here, she looked pretty much like this the whole race. After four or five miles, she looks like she's ready to quit. And she looked the same way when she crossed the finish line. Catherine, you got it again. 
You know, I just wanted to say one more thing about Lubov, and that is that she has been training in Florida for the last two months. She is very fit. To me, she looks very much fitter, fitter than she looks before. Okay, to Hal Eisner now. Okay, well, you know, there's plenty of drama right here at Figaro and Exposition, about two and a half miles into the race. How you doing, Elvis? Uh, what a crowd. I mean, it's amazing as these people go by. But, you know, they all started at the new relocation of the start-finish line downtown. A very, very significant, significant move, as we pointed out today, not just for these runners, but for the business merchants of the downtown area. They hope it's going to boost their image in the heart of the city. <laughs> you end up with more money down here, more people in restaurants? Absolutely. I mean, that's certainly a byproduct, a very positive one. A lot more activity, a lot more exposure. Positive exposure. Viewers around the world will see the glittering images of a downtown that boasts of beautiful architecture, building top swimming pools, glamorous hotels, the tallest building on the West Coast, the 19th century Mexican influence of the city's original settlement, Positive images that downtowners hope will wipe away the not so positive images of the riots of 1992. It affected downtown tremendously uh, from a business standpoint and a perception standpoint. And we felt that we needed to combat this, this attitude and this image that we had, and that certainly the image that was conveyed over the television screens across the nation, the world for that matter. So Villarreal and others formed the Downtown Business Council, and among other things, worked to bring the marathon through downtown. Certainly not one marathon is going to change an image, but what do you think it's going to take? I think it's going to take a series of great events, and we need to capitalize on all of them. The marathon is one. What an exciting day in downtown Los Angeles. You're watching the 11th running of the Los Angeles Marathon. think a car that's affordable and exceptional is too much to ask for. After all, the Accord has carved out a nice niche being exactly that. And now with 3.9% APR financing for up to 48 months, its affordability is more clear-cut than ever. In fact, it's an offer so solid, it's carved in stone. Get 3.9% APR financing for 48 months on any Accord. Welcome to Jack in the Box. May I take your order? Yeah. Is Jack there? <laughs> Just a moment. This is Jack. Mr. Box? Yeah, I'm, I'm really, really hungry. I was wondering what I should get. How much you got? About a buck. I'd go for two tacos for 99 cents. They'll fill you up, and they're really good. OK, thanks. You're welcome. Please pull up to the window. They say the Irish are famous for their fighting and their beer, but George Killian was never much with his fists. So rather than make enemies, he concentrated on making friends. He did this by making beer, not just any beer, but a fine amber lager. Handcrafted and extra slow brewed, he named it Killian's Irish Red. Then, whenever he walked down the street, people would say, there goes George Killian, not much with his fists, but he sure makes a stellar beer. Think it's too early to be thinking about Easter? Not if you're a Bonds Club member, because Bonds would like to give you this beautiful Easter ham free of charge. Just spend $300 at Bonds before March 15th and swipe your Bonds Club card every time you shop. We'll send you a certificate good for a free Easter ham. Vaughn's boneless and skinless chicken breasts, $4.99 a pound. Vaughn's Club, $1.99 a pound. Now spend $10 with Vaughn's Club and get a coupon for a free child ticket to SeaWorld and $5 off adult ticket. Now, don't you wish you were a Vaughn's Club member?
running and jumping and throwing and art, they seem to go together. And of course, this is one of the more international events in a very international city in Koreatown. Entertainment going on both uh, on the streets and, uh, and off the streets. Very bands, cultural bands, everything all over this race course. It is really a festival that ties the city together. And running to a different drum right now is the Elite Pack as you take a look at the men's leaders. And again, there's really not much point even in telling you who's in first place, who's in second place. This is really... Uh, very much up for grabs, and I have an idea it's going to remain that way for a good portion of this race. Let's take you down right now to the Crenshaw District, where uh, Brian Jenkins is holding forth. Brian? We're at Crenshaw on Rodeo, and uh, runners are coming through right about now. A big crowd got a party going on just to the left of me here. So uh, you can hear it's live. A lot of people out here uh, cheer these runners on. He's had some of the wheelchair people come through. Uh, but right now, mostly most of the runners uh, keeping a pretty good clip. It's nice and cool still. Uh, it was warming up earlier, but it uh, seems like the cloud cover came through and uh, kind of cooled things off. So a uh, good pace going and uh, uh, a lot of lively, uh, lively folks out here. We're just, just enjoying it. Back to you, folks. All right, thanks, Brian. Lively, the operative word, of course, still early in the race as you take a look at the lead pack, and uh, it is pretty much as it was. Seems like a couple of people might have dropped out of there, Larry. Barry, what's happening here, looking at their five-mile time, they are ahead of the pace. They sit down ahead of time, and they will have a rabbit in the race, and the rabbit is Salvatore Pada right there in from Mexico in blue. And his job is to, and he's a very good rabbit. He knows pace, and he's been very consistent in past marathons. Bill Burke pays him a stipend to lead everybody through at least the halfway point in the race wearing the Mizuno shirt that you see there. His goal is one hour, five minutes, and 30 seconds for the first half of this race. And they are running right now sub five minute pace, so they're a little bit ahead by maybe 20 to 40 seconds uh, of hitting that target. Whether they slow down or not, we'll see. But that is Eddie Hellebeck with a hat on right beside him. And he said, I'm gonna be right up in the lead and I'll see how I feel. And every now and then a rabbit doesn't become a rabbit. It just keeps on going. Well, will Eddie Hellebeck pull a Paul Pilkington? And, and that's the phrase they use in the sport now. Will a guy pull a Pilkington? And uh, we'll see. Eddie is 35 years of age, probably his last guest to make an Olympic team. He is going to become an American citizen. I'm talking about the man in the hat now. And in 1997, in the fall of 97, he married an American and wants to run for this country. And he said he, he's bothered by the politics over there of how they make a selection process. On the Honda leaderboard, you can see Halifax, the leader, very close still, and again, very little to choose between these. We have talked about the fact that this is an event that, that, that does have an awful lot to do with the Olympic Games so far as some of the international competitors co who are running in this race looking for a qualifying time. What's it feel like? Let's get another idea from another Olympian, Anita de France. I believe that the Olympic Games are a celebration of human excellence. And we have to work hard, those of us in the Olympic movement, to make sure that generations to come believe that they'll have a chance to compete and to share this notion of human excellence. Living in the Olympic Village is the, the most important uh, proof that there can be a, a world peace because people in the village live together we share meals together and we respect one another. I was determined not just to be an Olympian, but to be an Olympic champion. So I was willing to do whatever the coaches devised in forms of torture. Any athlete realizes that there's some point where they're gonna to come to the wall and they can either knock politely and go away or crash through it. So believe in yourself. Remember why you decided to start on this odyssey. And remember too, that people have been doing this across the millennia it's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for you to say, I've done something very special. And here is a look at some of the front runners in the women's race. Lubov Klutchko, however, we believe to be still out in front, and she is, as you can see, by more than a minute. And that is a long ways out. Wow. Esmeralda Guillen of, uh, of Mexico is a surprise person up there, as is Gonzalez. We'll have to see what happens there. But these women, and there you see Marie Carmen Diaz right there, number F-17 who was expected to be a factor. Catherine, what's happening out there? They well, closed I wanted, in? I wanted to show you the three of these women here, Larry and Barry, because they are a minute and 11 seconds behind the leader. This is our second pack of women, and they are ter terrific running Mexican women. They're on a 229 pace. They did six miles in 
234.11. So they are on a 229 marathon pace. In particular, I want you to notice in the middle of the pack in the black shorts, that's Mary Carmen Diaz, number F17. She um, has been running very, very well in altitude in, um, in Toluca, in Mexico, and she thinks that she could easily do a 230 here. She's running very, very smart by starting at a 229 pace, doing a conservative start, and is looking obviously for a good, strong finish. Back to you guys. Great job out there. And, and you know, there's a competition for any jobs in sports and television. We couldn't have better people out there doing this thing anywhere in the world than Tony and Catherine, in my opinion. Interesting, too, talking about Marie Carmen, that she has been training at altitude, as Catherine pointed out. And uh, there is a history of that, of Mexican runners training at altitude, coming down here and doing a pretty good job. Juan Dragan, who broke the record, of Absolutely. course. 1988. And, uh, and Jaime Blanca, who right, also, exactly. or Blanca Jaime, I should say, who also came here and won the women's race in that same race, coming down from altitude. Well, you're looking at another great aerial shot. Provided, of course, by the Fuji Blimp, the L.A. Marathon in the greater Los Angeles area. The Fuji Blimp helping us out today, giving us a few well, more than snapshots, aren't they? Don't go away. We're coming back. Honda Generators, power when you really need it. Don't get me wrong, when I'm banging them inside, lighting them up outside, hitting from the corner, yeah. at the line, above the rim, and down the hole. I'm not hot dogging. <laughs> I'm just marking my territory. This is my plan. That's cool. Without limits, that's the world that's coming. That's the world we want. And one company can help you put it all within your reach. Now, great time to be alive. The world is moving to a brilliant sun. Now is a great time for man, woman, child. I tell you, children, I tell you something. Listen, people, I tell you something. My human family, I tell you the truth. It's all AT&T, that's your true choice. It's not our job to tell you who to vote for this November, but it is our job to provide information you need to decide for yourself. I'm Bob Jimenez. At UPN News 13, ours is a grassroots approach to political coverage, looking at the issues and candidates through the eyes of people and families like yours, through experts and analysts who've been there, so that by November, you'll have the knowledge to make a very basic, very important decision. UPN News 13, weeknights at 10. Live at Koreatown on the uh, route of the LA Marathon 96. I'm Danny Romero from UPN 13. And I tell you, down here, and as part of the marathon, you can see all the culture going on throughout the city of Los Angeles. Here in Koreatown, they, uh, just a little while ago on this stage up here to my right, they've had dancers, uh, the knife dance, the drum dance, the fan dance, colorful costumes, great music, just again, showing the culture right here in the heart of Los Angeles. All that as the runners and the uh, wheelchair and the walkers and the bikers go by, as they swing past, past me here, they get to feel that part of Los Angeles as well. And you can too, right here on UPN 13 as we do the marathon, 96 through the heart of Los Angeles. All right, Barry, Larry. All right, thank you very much, Danny. Let's take a look at uh, the second pack of uh, male runners. And that's, this is uh, Vislav Perska, 
of Poland running by himself, but you see the group up ahead of him, and that's what he's headed for. Well, I hope he gets up there, because believe me, this is not the way to run the marathon. I mean, they even devised a movie about the loneliness of the long-distance runner in part, and this is lonely. This is tough. You, you draw energy when you have somebody beside you, and you don't want to hang out here like this all the way. It gets very debilitating. So he's got a ways to go now, still early in the race, but with a lead pack like this, which is starting to string out ever so slightly, the two leaders are as they were. Hellebuck running uh, closest to the curb with uh, Marcos Juarez and Salvador Parra. Parra, of course, the designated rabbit, and you look at it after seven miles on the Honda scoreboard. You know, one of the most worthwhile, there's a number of worthwhile causes, and you could point to any one of a number of them that have... Uh, to do with this Los Angeles Marathon. I really don't believe there is one any greater, any more important, or doing more for an individual than Students Run LA. It's something that you are very, very familiar with sitting on the board of directors. Well, I, I'm back east, but I really think this is a fabulous event. And the Students Run LA is a program devised seven years ago, started by Harry Shabazian, carried on by Eric Spears, Paul Trevani, Harry, and a guy named Don Beefy, and a, and a committee of people all over Los Angeles. And the Students Run LA program extends to high schools all over the place. And wait till you see what it does for these young people. Most of the kids in our program come from the inner city. And uh, a lot of kids join gangs because they think there's nothing else that they can get involved with. One of the critical things that we need to instill in kids nowadays is uh, the ability to set a long-range goal and give it enough time and work towards it over a period of time and eventually, you know, succeed in accomplishing that goal. It gives you so much confidence. You feel like you can do anything. I train every day and I really want to do my best time better than last year. You take a kid that six months ago could barely run a quarter of a mile and then six months later, they complete a marathon. Man, there's no way that kid's not gonna be able to say, you know what? I'm gonna go to college and at least, at least, even if they don't graduate, at least they'll give it a shot. And I have supportive running partners and a wonderful coach and I never wanna leave this program but I have to graduate. I would like to probably go into the computer and science field. It's one thing to be a clipboard coach. It's another thing to get out there and sweat and feel the pain. It was a great accomplishment. Most people, they think East LA is like, don't go there, this is a bad place, but they don't know about people like, like me. How you feeling? All right. All right, Harry? Did you get them trained well? Yeah, we're all set. It's a great day to run. We got 1,400 runners out here, and I think all of them are going to finish. You know, we hear we hear from you guys better running than gangs, right? Yes! Yes, yes definitely! Right. And you're feeling good right now? Yes! All right, guys, go get them. All right, thanks very much. That's a remarkable story, Larry. And I think the people in L.A. now are very familiar with it. People know about Students Run L.A. I really think it's a story that needs to be told on a national level and really needs to be implemented on a national level. Barry, I agree with you, and I hope other cities like New York pick it up. 75 high schools and middle schools involved here within a 45-mile radius of downtown L.A., and they find that it changes the life. More are going to college, nutrition habits, no smoking, family relationships. Families come out and cheer. First positive thing maybe one of their kids has ever really, really done. 1,400 students run L.A. runners, and you heard them say it. They're all going to finish, and you know what? I believe it. Remodeling, go to the base, home base. There are those who appreciate a big, thick, juicy Carl's Jr. Superstar. And there are those who don't. If it doesn't get all over the place, it doesn't belong in your face. Hey, early again, huh, 
Frank. I don't say this to many people. But what we do, the job we do. Okay, guys, listen up. It's the most important job I can Tony, think of. You've got a flight control check. Lewis and Randall. I mean, Morris, there's no such two. thing as a B-plus mechanic on this airline. Let's do it. Let's go. Everybody knows their job. Everybody's responsible. Anybody, right down to the most junior mechanic, can keep an airplane in this hangar if there's the slightest hint of a problem. You might think doing a job like this, day in, day out, it'd become routine. You know, just turning wrenches. But every now and then, I just go up and take a walk through the terminal. And right there, right in front of you, you see what's important. Need lumber? Go to the base. Home base. A runner has to tap into their strength source, as I like to call it, that sometimes they don't feel is there when they start that race, but they have to call upon it at a certain time when they feel like they have to give up or they can't keep the pace or a gymnast in training. You really have to go within and recognize that you do have it. And once you recognize it, that's the great thing, is that you realize you do have this within you. I think my advice for any athlete competing, whether it be a runner, a gymnast, or a basketball player, is to enjoy the process, enjoy what you're doing out there, and perform. This word compete, or being in competition, has a connotation of struggle and pressure. And if you let those things affect you while you're in the competition, you're not going to be performing at your best. But if you compete the way you train, which is usually you're having a good time. That's why you're in the sport. If you could compete that way, I think you're going to find you do your best. Here are the two leaders. That's the male lead pack on the left at about the eight mile mark, just coming into Koreatown. And that is Lubov Klotchko running all by herself, not literally, but figuratively all by herself. The woman in the lead by more than a minute. Let's go right now out on the race course with the men's lead pack, Tony Revis. And it is pretty much as it was, Tony. Well, it's starting to change a little bit, men. Uh, Eddie Hellebeck in the front. But we just passed through a Guatemalan cheering section. Of course, the Guatemalan men looking for their Olympic qualifying standards today. And they were just going nuts on Catalina. And we're just turning on to Wilshire now. Still para number nine and number four, Hellebeck. But uh, Marcos Juarez, number 34, and looks spectacular. Guatemalan, very young kid, 219-34, his best. But we've lost the two of our past, Rocha, our past champion from 93, and Santana from Brazil, also our runner-up. We've lost Jumi Akanga a long time ago, and what was a 16-man pack has really weeded itself out to really eight favorites, it seems. Eight guys seem to be rather comfortable with the pace, and some of the names we thought, like Molina and De Silva, look to be in a little bit of trouble right now. And downhill we go again. This is still a very fast course. 50 minutes flat at 10 miles. Five minute pace, 211 flat for the marathon. Boys? It's interesting well, that one thing we have not heard, a name we have not heard at all, is Peter Fonseca. Is he in that pack or anywhere to be seen? Right there, looking nice. Right, number three. Number, th number three, he's right back with uh, Juarez and Peter Fleming, number six. Right there. Those guys uh, breathe right strip on the, uh, the nose of Peter Fleming. He's on the Scotland living in Boulder. Fonseca looks very good. Catherine, uh, the, the men are still very dense. The women still just well, just lube off by herself. Just lube off by herself here, Tony. It's unbelievable that she has uh, slowed the pace to a 225, but there are still no other women in sight. Well, that stands to reason. The next pack is on a 229 pace. But, uh, Tony, I've got to kind of agree with you about this course. It's interesting. They're running up and down so much. There are going to be some very, very sore legs tonight after this marathon. I think the net result may be fast, but I think they're going to be some sore legs, a lot like the Boston Marathon marathon with the sharp ups and downs at the beginning of the course. Okay, now we're looking at Lubov. She's really running very well. And she's, in fact, uh, Larry earlier was talking about the danger of running alone. Lubov is in danger of breaking up her own pack here. These guys are really terrific around her. They're not too close. They're kind of helping each other. But the problem is, is that as she's running so well, she, um, she may be losing them. They keep falling off the pace. I mean, I just hope they can stay with her and help her out. In a little while, we're going to drop back to the second pack so that we can uh, show you how they're doing. Back to you guys. 
And again, back up with the lead man, and you can see that pack of, uh, well, it looks to be eight or ten. Fourteen, actually. I've just been counting them there. Fourteen men up at the lead pack here at ten miles, and two men trying to struggle to hold on. Jumi Ikonga, who we showed you before, has fallen off this pace. He ran uh, 216 recently, uh, has only had two marathons in the last year, rarely leaves Tanzania in his job, uh, although he trains over there at high altitude, and I guess here he's not going to make the Olympic team. He had to run between 211 and 212 today, and he looks to be gone. Salvatore Parra in, red, in the uh, blue up there, his job to tow everybody along. Eddie Hellebuck helping out as well. Hellebuck uh, due to continue on, and we'll see at 18 to 20 if he decides to try and make this as his quest for the Olympic team for Belgium. In the black right behind him, that is Peter Fleming from Scotland, and he again trying to make the Olympic team, coming in with a lifetime best of 213.33. Just past the 10 mile mark at Wilshire as we take a look at exactly where these runners are right now. And there you see, making the turn into Koreatown. Barry, another three miles will be gently flat or slightly downhill. Wind not a factor here today. The cloud cover seems to be holding. So it's a good, comfortable run for these guys as we are looking down from one of our aerial shots on the Wilshire district of Los Angeles. And that's what the runners will be looking at. As you can see, the pack continues to be pretty much as it has been. And all of these runners, and Tony Revis made this point, is that they are running uh, very formfully. Nobody looks as though they're dropping out. Nobody looks as though they're tying up. Everybody running very comfortably. And there you saw the leaderboard for just a moment. We talked uh, earlier to Catherine Switzer, who talked about the fact that the up and down of this run is going to cause some sore knees. Well, in the early days of this event, cause more than sore knees. The earliest marathon recorded was the historical run of Pheidippides, the Athenian soldier who, after a day at war, ran from the city of Marathon to Athens proclaiming, we are victorious. Then he fell to the ground and died. Since that time, athletic events have united nations in friendly international competitions. And now, as in ancient times, the most glamorous, accessible, and awe-inspiring event of the Olympic Games is the marathon. In 1972, Frank Shorter's victory run at the Munich Games marked the first time an American won an Olympic marathon since Johnny Hayes in 1908, and it inspired a running craze. Here in Los Angeles, Joan Benoit's spirited run through the streets of LA thrilled the nation. The crowds went wild as she entered the Coliseum and gracefully crossed the finish line as the first women's marathon winner in the history of the Olympic Games. Because of the success and spirit of the 1984 Olympics, Los Angeles launched its inaugural marathon in 1986. It was the largest first-time marathon and has since grown to become the fourth largest in the world. Every year here in Los Angeles, the Olympic spirit is reignited with the running of the City of Los Angeles Marathon. You did tell me, Fidipity, you should have stayed in the pack a little bit longer. Yeah, absolutely. He should have run 20 miles and fell dead then if he had to die. You know, I mean, these guys would not suffer as badly. He took it out too soon. And that might be said about the past winners, Rosil de Rocha of uh, Brazil, as he is running uh, well behind the lead pack at the moment. Remember the high, high shot we showed everybody a little while back? Well, he was one of those two people back there, uh, and he is a good quarter mile plus behind right now. So he's got a ways to go, and uh, he's got a whole bunch of people in front of him, and that makes it that much tougher. He and his running mate Santana right there, uh, and that is Santana, both of them paid their own way up to this race. They've had great success in L.A. here. They were hoping to replicate it today, and it doesn't look like it'll be their day. It's just about an airplane ride up to the lead pack for them, however, as you look at the rabbit that is Para continuing to set the pace, but he's got a whole lot of company. This is the 11th running of the Los Angeles Marathon. Who's going to win it? Anybody's guess. Just look. The 
sun comes standard. The Del Sol from Honda. Ooh. With new attacks. Ooh. New super combos. Ooh. Killer graphics. And even deadlier characters. Just about everyone's getting into Street Fighter Alpha. Bringing home. Hi there. Lunch. It's been done okay. and done again. Even the special's not that special. The usual? A same old thing. So head to KFC. We've put a whole new spin on lunch. Introducing Chicken Twisters. Tender chunks of KFC chicken, fresh veggies, tangy sauces, rolled and ready in a soft bread twist. Every day until 3, only at KFC. So don't just do lunch, enjoy it. And now at KFC, try any one of our new chicken twisters, Caesar Club or Spicy Buffalo, just $2.49. Right now, every time you make a calling card call with 1-800-CALL-ATT, you're automatically entered to win a trip for two to the NBA playoffs and a chance to join four fans to shoot for $300,000 in prizes. The 1-800-CALL-ATT NBA sweepstakes. Every time you use it, you're entered. It's that simple. Well, sort of. That's your true choice, AT&T. Welcome back to the City of Los Angeles Marathon, the 11th renewal of this prestigious event. Let's take a look at who's doing what right at the moment. There is the men's pack, and uh, once again, there are about 10, 11, or were 14 a moment ago, and we'll get a count on them as we see that it is stringy out just a little bit, but that is still Para the Rabbit, who has the lead, uh, Klutschko, all by herself still in the women's race. You know, they were called 100 years ago, go as you please races prior to the 1896 Olympics. There's nothing about going as you please today. Everybody sets their own targets, has an idea of what they can accomplish, and presses the body right to that edge in hopes they don't nick themselves. And again, the pace here, very solid. There you see the 11 mile mark. They are slightly under five minutes a mile, and they are moving along well here. They're at about a 210.50 marathon pace. As you see on the leaderboard, brought to you by Honda, the presenting sponsor of the Los Angeles Marathon. And first, second, and third, really, as you can see, doesn't really mean a whole lot at this point. Uh, let's take you from the elite pack now back out to the Crenshaw District, where I imagine Brian Jenkins has quite a lot of company. Brian? We'll get to Brian in just a moment. We continue to watch the lead pack here. And the lead pack, uh, Larry, it seems has dwindled a bit. It has, Barry. You know, this is a race of attrition. And what you try and do, the, the athletes will get together after the race and use the phrase, were you able to maintain if they don't see each other in the race? And what they're referring to is, could you hold the pace that you set out there to do? And more often than not, you can't. The interesting struggle here of breaking up this pack will occur after 13 miles, in my opinion, as they head for the hills. All right, once again, let's take you back out to the Crenshaw District and Brian Jenkins. Brian? Hey, uh, everything looks like a big party out here. I'll tell you, we've got uh, a good majority of the runners coming through about now. We're between about mile five and six, and uh, it's crazy. Uh, you got people out here just glad-handing with the runners. Uh, you'd think they were running for office or something. But uh, at any rate, a lot of folks, uh, families out here, with their people with their kids running. Uh, it's just pandemonium. People are out here having a ball. <laughs> But that's, uh, that's what it looks like out here right now. Back to you, Barry, Larry. All right, thank you very much, Brian. Here is Rocha. He was the winner of this race, and he is still uh, chasing the lead pack at the moment. Well, you know, these guys are very close friends. Uh, and, and Santana, uh, they, they run for a large chemical company down in Brazil that sponsors them, much like Nike and Reebok have athletes here. And there you see they're going back to a warm, sunny day three years ago. He can do it. And you're seeing again how they ran that day, pulling each other along. And it was Jose Hildo Rocha. And, and the R's in, in Portuguese are pronounced with an A, so it's really like Rocha, uh, as he ran very, very well again on this warm day. Can't say that on television, can you? What? Rocha. Horsha? 10204, <laughs> as you look at uh, Especially Jose, on a Sunday. Jose Hildo Rocha. <laughs> and Santana, but uh, they got a ways to go today, a very different race than the one that you saw a moment ago in 1993, and here is what they are striving to attain. 
Let's take you back out uh, on the course and following the lead pack uh, is Tony Revis and Tony uh, once again a little bit of distance being put between the lead pack and some of the pretenders right at the moment. Well Larry said it well this is a classic race of attrition out here in Los Angeles today. Para and Hellebeck doing an excellent job of keeping the pace very even 12 miles in just under 60 minutes so right at five minute per mile pace and the upgrades are very narrow at this point very short. Uh, they haven't hit the meat of this course as of yet. And one by one, these athletes are starting to fall off. The question will be what happens when power leaves us at the 13-mile mark. But we're in Hancock Park right now. I think this new course has also brought more people, more fans onto the side of the roads. And that's going to help not just only our leaders, but also the 19,200 we've got behind them. Catherine, uh, when's Luboff going to get some company? I think it's going to be a long time, Tony, because she's got two minutes on these women. We are looking right now at the second group of women on the left, Mary Carmen Diaz from Mexico, a Mexican compatriot on the right in the yellow, Gonzalez and Larry Ross. And if you can give me Gonzalez's first name, I'd be grateful because I don't have that on my sheet here. But uh, Diaz has been so, s surging on her compatriot here and looking very, very fine. But the point is, is that the two of these women are in second and third place. Klotchko is still two minutes ahead of them. The time at 10 miles for Klotchko was 56 minutes flat, which is a 226 marathon. For these women, it's 57-58, 231 marathon. So back to you, Larry and Barry. You know, one question that I have for you out there, uh, she is at what pace, uh, Klotchko, I missed that. She's at running a 226 marathon pace, so she is slowing slightly, but I mean, she's making up the distance. All right, thank you very much, Catherine. We, of course, will get back to you, keep up with what's going on in the women's race, and the big question there is, can anybody catch Lubov Klotchko, her best 228 and change? You know, this is a race for a lot of people, and a lot of people run this race for a lot of different reasons. Uh, we have an opportunity now to take a look at one guy who runs the race. Well, I suppose he's dancing to his own tune. He's a guy, I promise you, you'll flip over this guy. Just watch. <laughs> Away from Lockport, New York, Mike Kuzakria has put the pancake on the marathon map. After nine years and 14 marathons, the pancake man runs a seven-minute mile while flipping flapjacks down the course. I've added a little uh, tricks, you know, over the years and stuff, but uh, it's uh, it's gotten better. You know, I figure the fans, they want to see a little action, so I'm giving them their money's worth. <laughs> In his tenure as the Pancake Man, Mike has flipped over 106,000 times, had 22 drops, and has had three no-drop races. And his specialized craft has even landed him in the Guinness Book of World Records. If you look up... Uh, Pancake marathoning, or, or just look under pancake or marathoning. You'll find it under there for uh, pancake flipping in a marathon. It's it's listed under. And uh, I've been in all the different Guinness books, um, uh, Guinness Book of Sports Records. They've got a picture of me in there, and now they're Guinness books and stuff. So it's it's. Uh, if you went out today and found one, you'd find my name in there. So I'm pretty happy about it. <laughs> Over the years, the Pancake Man has raised thousands of dollars for various charities, and last year he even flipped for Jay Leno when he made a guest appearance on The Tonight Show. It's, it's great. You know, you work all day, you, you do the regular stuff, then you got this as a hobby, and it makes life nice, I'll tell you. <laughs> so here we are with Mike the Pancake Man. Yay! Mike, how you doing? Not bad, not bad. Hang in there. What were you thinking with this whole idea? Well, I figured, you know, I could... Raised a lot of money for charity and stuff, so I came up with this gimmick. I figured through the Guinness Book. And, so uh, I figured it'd work out good and uh, come out here to L.A. and uh, get away from the cold back home Buffalo or Lock Lockport, New York, my family. Oh, there you go. Well, listen, I think the whole country wants to know why a pancake, not a waffle or French toast. I mean, is there some advantage to the pancake? Well, a pancake is the only thing in the Guinness Book. I couldn't find a waffle toss. Oh, okay. By the way, I went back to Lockport. I'm kind of hungry. I thought I'd do some mid-race carbo loading, if you don't mind. <laughs> right. I got my napkin and my syrup. <laughs> and I thought we'd take a taste. Oh, yeah, some carbo loading on it. Hey, thanks, Mike. Thanks a lot. Hi, Julie. I love you, honey. Thank you, Tim, and thank you to the pancake man. Simple fact is, he was going to do waffles, but he kept tripping over the extension cord. You know, it's leave not... it, leave it to Tim to have his uh, his bib right there in the middle of the race. Where did he pull that syrup from? That's what I want to know. You look at the lead pack, and uh, we, of course, are going to be coming back and look at the gap now as the this race of attrition starts to really be just that. As you look all the way back now, it's probably 300 yards to the man running behind the lead pack, 
and then it's another couple hundred yards back from there and you can see the lead pack starting to dwindle it is getting smaller and smaller the real race should be just about to begin at about the 13 mile mark we are fast approaching that mark 107.32 right now that's the lead pack Lubov Klutchko running by herself amongst the women and the story there can anybody catch her a lot of stories to be told in the 11th running of the Los Angeles Marathon we'll be back The finish of a marathon is 26.2 miles from the start, but it really starts a thousand miles before that, where dedication has no exact measure. It's a place called the heart. This year's LA Marathon is proudly sponsored by Honda, where now you can lease a well-equipped Accord LX for just $239 a month. After all, who knows more about long distance performance than Honda? This July, competitors from around the globe will assemble in Atlanta. And no matter what they excel at, Swatch will excel at timing them. Swatch, the official timekeeper of the Centennial Olympic Games. Gentlemen, this is who we're up against, and this is what we're up against, the Burger King Whopper. You can almost taste the all-beef patty sizzling over an open flame. The fresh lettuce, onions, pickles, tomatoes, or get it any way you like. No lettuce, extra pickles, whatever you want. Have it your way. Wish we could say that. Come into Burger King and get a flame-broiled Whopper for just 99 cents every day. Made exactly the way you like it. Any ideas? Uh, yeah, do you mind if we go there for lunch? You know... Research. It's a brand new UPN Tuesday. Surprise! Brandy is Moesha, and she's the driving force behind television's freshest new comedy. I want the car, but not the one in the garage. You turned down our new car. Now she's wheeling and dealing for the car she really wants, but will Dad put the brakes on the deal? You think that you can limbo under this price? You go right ahead. That's a low bar. Then on minor adjustments, Trevor has a major crush. Uh-oh. Moesha and minor adjustments. Beginning Tuesday at 8 on UPN 13. Let's not talk about the lead pack for just a moment. Let's talk about our rate runner in this race. He is Tim McLuhan. He has now had his breakfast. He had a pancake on the way. Let's get to Tim McLuhan right now. Tim, what's going on? What's your perspective on the Lopez race? Here with us. Edgar, I'm sorry to do this. We're on a hill. This can't be any fun yeah. for you. Edgar! Hey. get some help from your friends here. Edgar, Woo. you're with a program called Toys for Guns. What's yeah. that all about? That's uh, I guess an organization in New York. We are running marathons, you know, we pick up guns from the street. So it's a lot of guys involved now. You know. And you came out here to run this race in yeah. L.A. to raise money to get guns off the street. Yeah. Well, I think you're a tremendous inspiration. I got some great news for you. Right. It's downhill from here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ready? Meanwhile, here are the leaders. There's the men's leader right at the moment that is... Eddie Hellebuck, he has been right up there all the way. Para, incidentally, has dropped out of the race, we believe. We saw him drop back, Salvador Para. As expected, Barry, too. That's right. At the we halfway point. Halfway rabbit. point is exactly right. And so now the race is really starting to be joined up in the front end. People looking around to see who's there, and there are fewer and fewer people there. Eight, eight in total are still left up in the front with Hellebuck doing the work again he is sort of a semi rabbit semi not rabbit larry as you know he's sort of getting paid from uh, every step on from 13 on there's a potential he initially wanted to run the boston marathon its 100th anniversary and then uh, carrie pinkowski put the field together for los angeles said please come to los angeles he agreed and if he feels good he might just go all the way but there's eight guys left in that lead pack and the more people that are around him i think less the chances are that eddie will go the distance <laughs> 
See the time after 13 miles, 102, just about 103 for Hollaback. Lads, they're doing exactly, you couldn't pay Para enough money. They wanted to go 105.30, he went 105.28. So take some, take $2 off his payday. <laughs> Pretty accurate though. Right now, let's take a look at the other side of the board, the women's race here. And the women's race really hasn't been a race. Lubov Klachko continues to be all by herself amongst the women. And uh, a little bit earlier, uh, Artie Ojeda had an opportunity to sit and chat with the coach of Lubov Klachko talking about the tactics of this race. Artie? One of the interested onlookers here in the press tent is the coach of the ladies' leader, Lubov Klutschko. With us is coach Anatoly Stray Strayets and the interpreter Jennifer Latham. The, uh, the the first question is, uh, how does he feel so far about their, her performance? Anatoly, how do you feel now about the fact that she wins in the field? She runs well. I feel the excitement. It's just unexplainable quality that goes through unexplainable reasons. Uh, he says that he feels nervous. He feels that uh, for him, as a coach, he's more nervous than she is. She's out working. She's out doing her job, and he's just here, here waiting for her to finish. And he feels good, though, about it. Right now, she is so far ahead of the pack. There's been talk about, you know, the danger of uh, breaking away from the pack. Is that a concern right now? Вы волнуетесь, что она сейчас так вперёд? Она Нет, это необъяснимое волнение, которое переходит какие-то психологические барьеры в зависимости от того, когда я как спортсмен выступал и теперь нахожусь в роли тренера. Это такой фактор, который не является примером того, что я знаю, что мы проделали определенную работу с Любой, и мы готовились к тому, чтобы она выиграла uh, okay. he, he says that he feels very confident. She's trained really hard for this. She's um, she was running very strongly, and he sh he believes that she can continue with the way she's going. All right, the coach of Lubov Klatchko, the women's leader, and in Russian we say Spasiba. Thank you. Back to you, Barry. All right, thank you very much, Artie. Running comfortably. A couple of tidbits about her. She has not run her 228 plus going back. To, to, look at the time there in that hot day in Los Angeles. Um, and she, uh, she's won lots of money, and she keeps it in the United States and the Bank of America. Thank you very much. Speaking of lots of money, let's take a look at the finish of the wheelchair competition as they head toward the finish line. 